Welcome back to Full Access. Excellent. Full Access. Enjoying the lessons. That's great. Great work. Great work. Jeff Steen, what's going on? Happy Friday back at you. Who else we got here? Russ. Russ got a good question off the top, uh, everybody. Uh, he's curious, when you learn a new song, do you view the performance of the artist's you see some of the nuances in the lead, for, for example, or can can you hear these after all these years of playing? Um, that is a great question. Yeah, it's a combination of everything. Um, most of the time I can hear what's going on. Um, and that only comes from decades of figuring out songs, decades of learning songs, playing songs, solos, all that kind of stuff. After a while, you get you can hear what's happening because you've played a lot of that stuff. <clears throat> And so you kind of know what it is and you can recognize it by ear. Um, so a lot of that definitely, uh, you know, uh, you know, when I'm digging into a song to teach it on guitar tricks, I will use every resource at my uh, disposal because at Guitar Tricks, we, we really strive to teach note for note versions, uh, you know, note correct versions of the songs. And uh, so that can mean, you know, you're drawing on your experience. You know, I'm able to hear what I can hear, but sometimes it gets a little tricky what, just with uh, mixes. And sometimes the guitars are buried by other instruments and you just need to learn, uh, use a lot of resources that are available to you. Now, of course, in the internet age, uh, that's uh, basically a gold mine. <laughs> You've got YouTube, you can watch. Uh, there's usually a video of somebody playing it live. Um, and you can kind of get an idea. And I, I always check that stuff out because I like to see, uh, you know, how they're playing it live. Uh, and, you know, sometimes it can turn you on to something you hadn't thought of uh, position wise or stuff like that. So, yeah, it's a combination of everything. But I've been playing long enough to be able to hear most of what's happening, uh, luckily. So, uh, yeah, that's that's that answer. Hopefully that answers it for you. Uh, what's up, Jay? HH, what's up? From Ottawa, welcome Canada, my homeland. Great to see you all. Uh, Jay, what's up? Hope you're well. Good day, Peter down under, Sydney, Steve and NH, what's up? Good to see you. And uh, Danny Ryan, what's going on? Dennis in Arkansas, welcome. Laura, what's going on? Theodore, Rich, Vincent from Florida, excellent. Mark David, what's up? Terry, what's going on? Good evening, Jody One. Zane, it's going great. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining in. Uh, James from Syracuse, welcome. Jeff, what's going on? Steve, what's happening? Oh, we've got, got a great group on here tonight. Uh, Jason, good day from Perth. Back at you. Love it. Uh, Laura's been doing some personal practice, one, four, five progressions in every key and working on every chord shape, triads and inversions. Excellent, excellent stuff. Great way to learn the fretboard. Great way to be able to play chord progressions up and down the fretboard, right? Awesome stuff. I love it. Cleveland's Dave. Dave Staub, what's up? Welcome, welcome. Terry, what's going on? Rad Flying V. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yes, doing much better this week. <laughs> so uh, we're good. Nikki the Dog, what's going on? Riff Wrath. I like that one. ACDC nod there. Venice, California. I love it. Good one. Ron, what's going on? Welcome. Uh, I appreciate the kind words. Jay Tarpo. Thank you. I appreciate that. Gerald from Ottawa as well. All right. A couple, a two from Ottawa. There you go. William from Nebraska. Welcome, welcome. Uh, it's for you from Montreal. What's up? It's been a while. Glad you're back. Hey, excellent, excellent. Uh, Paul, good day in Melbourne. Good day back at you. Thanks for joining. Uh, James Cody's got a, a question about picks. Any recommendation as to the thickness of pick uh, acoustic versus electric guitar? Um, there are kind of no rules for this. Um, so it comes down to your personal preference. Uh, I can tell you what I prefer, which is a thinner pick for the acoustic uh, and a thicker one for the electric. Uh, it just works for me. Uh, but sometimes uh, musical... Uh, uh, depending on what you're doing musically, uh, will call for different picks for what you're trying to do, right? Um, but generally speaking, I think the, the acoustic sounds really nice with a thinner pick 
um, particularly for the strumming and everything. Uh, you might want to go to a heavier pick if you do a lot of flat picking, uh, bluegrass kind of stuff, right? Um, I like a thicker pick on the electric because uh, it lets you get aggressive pretty easily and you can kind of just back off it a little bit and work the dynamics uh, still with a heavy pick. So hopefully that helps. All right. Barb's in Connecticut. Welcome, welcome. Steve, what's going on? Uh, thanks for joining. Chris Cook in Perth as well. All right. Excellent. Uh, David Guthrie in Auburn. Welcome. Excellent. Paul. Uh, King 50 in North Nevada. Checking in. Excellent. HH uh, has a question here in relation to Russ's question. Do you learn your songs by heart? I always have to go back to my music. How do you Move remembering the song without looking at your notes. Uh, it depends on the song. I always try to memorize everything, okay? Uh, and it's been a while since I played live. I want to start getting out there and playing live again. Um, but, you know, if, if you're kind of getting out there live, playing your set or playing your songs regularly, it tends to stay in there longer, right? Um, in the context of guitar tricks, when I, I learn songs and I go do the song tutorials on guitar tricks, um, Nine times out of 10, I'll just try and memorize the songs as much as I can. Sometimes I have to have little notes. Uh, if, For example, if there's a song with just lots of guitar fills throughout the song, uh, I might have to have some notes just to, you know, keep me honest and, and make sure that, uh, you know, uh, you know, if I've done enough of the practicing, hopefully the notes are just redundant because I've practiced it enough that it's kind of there. Uh, but sometimes it gets, you know, there gets to be a little bit too too uh, many things to remember on a shoot. So uh, I will refer to my notes, but uh, it's always a great practice to try and memorize as much as you can. And I'm talking about anything, not only just songs on the guitar, but your scales, your scale patterns, your chord shapes, all that stuff. Try to memorize everything that you're learning, okay? Really goes a long way. Sita, what's up? San Rafael, welcome, welcome. I do play live every Friday night. Thanks, Rusty. I guess so. What's up? Doug's here from Denver. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Rich in Beijing, good morning to you. Thanks for joining. Uh, Terry's uh, talking about the new Megadeth record. I have heard a couple of the songs. Uh, it's definitely strong. Uh, if, you're into, if you're into that uh, big, four, uh, big four thrash metal, uh, they seem to be at the top of their game right now. So I'm looking forward to hearing the whole record. But yes, really sounding good. Right on. <laughs> Donna, welcome, welcome. Great to see you as always. Okay. Uh, for those of you just joining for the first time, thank you for joining. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we're here every Friday at the same time. Uh, I will altern alternate each week between acoustic and electric. This week we are on the acoustic. But having said that, I... Uh, most of the examples that we go through are transferable very easily. So if you just have an electric guitar, that's totally fine. All of this stuff is applicable, okay? Um, but we do call this the acoustic workout. It's a little more acoustic centric, but again, guitar still, skills are guitar skills and, and you wanna be able to apply them on both instruments. Uh, also, for those of you joining possibly for the first time, expand the description below the video uh, I have links to a uh, PDF of tabs that we're going to go through. So each and every week I come up with about eight exercises, musical examples that we go through to hopefully inspire, uh, to give you something to practice throughout the weekend into the next week, uh, hopefully inspire some experimentation and uh, some things that uh, maybe you haven't seen before or some things that might uh, inspire you to want to tackle, uh, you know, just as far as approaches, techniques, musical examples, all that kind of stuff, okay? So expand the description, get the tabs in the PDF, okay? There should be a link there, all right? Uh, Laura's current listens are Ty Seagull and King Gizzard and the Wizard Lizard. I like it. I haven't heard of them, but I'm gonna have to check them out. That sounds great. Yeah, Dennis, it, uh, it's actually cool. It happened last week as well. Uh, I think YouTube might have up updated something with their streaming Thing because my camera is looking a little bit different, a little bit better last week and then again this week. So there we go. Can't complain about that. What's up, Dustin? Glad you made it. All right, everybody. A um, little bit of a warm up with some major pentatonic kind of stuff uh, out of two positions. 
Uh, this is exercise one in the PDF. Uh, the first one, 1A, one is in the key of G major pentaton or the key of G major, we're using the pentatonic scale, major pentatonic scale. For a little bit of just a little bit of a warm up sort of riff, single note line kind of thing. Let me play it. We'll talk about it a little bit. It goes like this. Okay. So we're starting on the low G, third fret of the low string. I recommend the ring finger uh, because we're going to be playing on the second fret with the open strings and the second fret on the middle strings here. And then sort of grabbing a uh, sliding from the second fret uh, to the fourth fret on the G string. And then you want to have your index finger on the top string, right? Uh, I've got you picking this. Okay, so we've got a quarter note on the root note, third fret of the low string. And then we switch to eighth notes. Open A, second fret of the A. Open D, second fret of the D. Open G, second fret of the G. Okay, just going up the G major pentatonic scale. And then a slide from two to four, right? Fourth fret of the G string and then skipping a string and including the third fret of the high string onto that. And so you have this, uh, these are known as a, a sixth interval shape right here. Fourth fret of the G, third fret of the high string. And those notes come right out of the G major bar chord, right? So I start on the G note. Work up speed a little bit. Whoops, missed it. Okay. It's a nice little warm up, nice little riff. Get some picking going, get your dexterity uh, going, right? And then adding in a little bit of a slide. Yes, Pink Floyd -y a little bit. Uh, Donna says, uh, reminds you of the song My Girl by The Temptations. Yes, that is the sound. Incidentally, talking about ear training, great observation, Donna. This is the this is the sound of the major pentatonic scale. Is my girl right? If you're if I play the G major pentatonic scale, that's one octave of the G major pentatonic scale. That's the sound of the G ma of the major pentatonic scale. You can play it in any key, right? If I play it in A. Those are the notes of major pentatonic in order is that identifiable riff from my girl. So uh, it's a great way to kind of get your ear in there, right? A little bit. Cool, cool. What's up, Elias? Welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. Ryan, what's going on? Welcome. Excellent. Uh, Joseph, welcome, welcome. Good to see you. All right, one more time on 1A. Let's do something simple, similar here. One B, uh, let's move it up to uh, A major pentatonic. So we're going to play this a little bit differently, playing off the open A string, okay? So I've got the open A string, and then I'm going to grab the second fret of the A string and slide up two frets to the fourth fret. Again, I recommend the ring finger because you want to have your index finger around the second fret. So if you use your ring finger and slide up to the fourth fret, that just naturally places your index finger in the position to be able to continue with this exercise. Now check it out. I've got some hammer-ons going on. Uh, second to the fourth fret of the D string. So I've got my index finger and I'm hammering on my ring finger, two frets up. Same thing on the G string, second fret to the fourth fret. And then from there, I'm going to pick and slide up and grab the fifth fret of the high string. Okay? So. One more time. So Donna's asking what chords we're playing under the scales. So uh, I'm playing an A. So for this one, for A major pentatonic, it works over the A chord. Okay? 
my A major. Right? The previous example, 1A. Okay? Works on G major. Okay? Cool, cool. Excellent. Uh, let's see. Doug's got a question. Uh, what do I use for an acoustic amp? I love my Fishman, but the batteries are dead. I have to replace it. Yeah, the Fishmans are great. Uh, I used to play with an artist that uh, did the acoustic thing through the Fishman. Always worked great. Sounded good. Um, I do not have a, a dedicated acoustic amp. I'm just running through my Fractal Axe FX, which you can kind of see in the corner of the screen down here. I have an acoustic guitar patch in there and uh, that's rigged into the microphone that I'm using for the stream. So uh, you should be hearing a little bit of, a little bit of reverb there, a little bit of compression, a little bit of EQ just to uh, clean it up a little bit. Okay. Jazz Smith's got a question. I'm very new to guitar playing. I'm trying to land on my basic chords instead of building them on the fret by repetition and with a metronome. Should I be trying this? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so th there's a couple things. Uh, and if you're not a member of Guitar Tricks, I highly recommend checking it out. Sign up, you get a free trial. Uh, I think it's a 14 day trial and start the fundamentals course. Uh, you want to be working on your basic chords. Okay. Um, but you also want to be working on single note stuff. Okay, so uh, a case like this might have a few uh, challenging uh, things. All right. So you are a member of Guitar Tricks. I like that jazz. I, I think I've taken that to say you've got access. Okay. So you're going through fundamentals. So just keep doing it. Um, but at the same time, we can be working on, on single note. Uh, you know, we just start off with sort of the, the spider stuff, right. To try and get going. But this particular exercise, uh, exercise one, yes, uh, you can work on this. even without adding in the slides and the hammer-ons and sort of the more advanced sort of things, um, just work on single notes, okay? Try to get clean single notes, go as slow as you need to go in the beginning, okay? That's my other advice for you. Go really slow um, and just make sure that you're making clean notes, even if you have to go one note at a time, okay? A little bit every day, start to build on it, you start to improve it, okay? Excellent question. Thanks so much. Uh, there you go. What else we got here? Uh, <clears throat> Doug, all connected to the cage system in these first two examples. Mike, yes, you could use cage to explain it, uh, but a lot of times we learn major and minor pentatonic box shapes. Uh, it's really just the box shape, right? So even without getting into the whole all-encompassing idea of caged, which uh, to some... Uh, some beginners can be a little bit overwhelming. This is just simply, you know, that's a box shape for major pentatonic, right? It's the E minor box. It's also the G major box. It's the same notes, right? So uh, that's where that's coming from in its most basic form, okay? Uh, Sue, what's up, is asking, is there a PDF? Yes. So uh, expand the description below the video. You'll see, get the tabs for this session right here. There should be a link and you should be able to get that PDF. All right. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Tin Lee Trung, I like the song Hotel California. I practiced the intro for one week. Uh, I wonder, do you like that slow or over my ability? Yes, um, definitely go slow with it and do you don't have to do the whole intro all at once right like if it's if you find it challenging if you find it, this goes for anything on guitar if you find it challenging difficult at first whatever you know whatever it is take just a tiny chunk of it slow it way down and just work it with repetition okay and build on it okay um we can't, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'm going to learn this intro and the intro might have a bunch of different parts to it. Right. And it can be a little overwhelming and it's a lot to keep track of. So just pick a bar or two. Right. Try and do that and just uh, go slow with it and build on it. Right. Do a little bit each each day, each and every day. If you see that there's uh, some sort of 
kind of progress, then keep going, then move on to the next thing, connect it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Uh, yes, Susan. So th this comes to your question here, finding full songs on GT really difficult, uh, made easy songs are too easy. Yeah. So, um, again, uh, you don't have to do all of the parts all at once. Okay. And especially there's a lot of songs on guitar tricks, uh, Susan, that, uh, uh, they might have two electric guitars playing really complex stuff, but there might be an acoustic guitar that's playing more straight ahead stuff. Okay. So look for those songs where there might be a, you know, a guitar one, uh, you know, guitar number one in one, in one of those songs that is a, just sort of a rhythm guitar. That's a little more straightforward. Start with that. Okay. Uh, we don't have to learn all the guitar parts in a song. Just start with the ones that you can handle and build off it. Okay. Uh, a huge fan of smaller chunks, going slow, and just building on it, okay? Uh, excellent. Uh, Laura's been working on the shapes, uh, the pentatonic shapes with Schlegel. Excellent. All summer long. Excellent. Good stuff. Uh, and Doug is, of course, rocking with Caged. I love it. <laughs> excellent. Uh James is asking him, okay, still practicing my guitar. There's some stuff that's kind of hard for you to play. Yeah. Jazz Smith, anyway, you can repeat slowly what you're doing with this G-Box. Yeah. So, you know, in the context of the example, playing it slow, the actual example, 1A goes like this. Now, the actual G major pentatonic scale, and you can look this up on Guitar Tricks or anywhere for that matter, uh, Google, YouTube, whatever, but uh, starts on G and goes up. So it's basically from the low string, zero, third fret, zero meaning open string, zero, three, okay, then zero, two, zero, two, zero, two. So that's the A string, D string, G string is open. And then the second fret, B string and high string are open in third fret. Okay. All right. Excellent. 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 Uh, what else we got here? Lots of, lots of stuff on the comments. I love it. Uh, Build the train. Love it. There it is. Good day from Melbourne. Craig B, what's up? Hello there. Uh, Riff Wrath, Friday Night Live Sets contents. Yes. PDF below to the description. <laughs> uh, what else we got? There you go, Terry. That's right. Absolutely. Let your love flow. That's a good one, too. Yeah, let's do it. Exercise two, go something like this, 2A. All right. Got some 16th note strums. Okay, if you notice, we've got the staple downstroke. Uh, the arrow pointing down is the upstroke. Okay. If you look at the rhythm of this, you've got an eighth note, uh, you've got basically dotted eighth notes throughout this uh, this whole bar, which means uh, a dotted eighth note means that we're holding it an extra 16th note. So it's an eighth note plus a 16th note, okay? So that means that one E and uh, okay? If you're strumming, uh, if your pulse is one E and a, two E and a, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, you're going to do a down, up, okay? I'm going to come down two frets. Well, first of all, this is the upper part of an A major, seventh fret of the D, sixth fret of the G, fifth fret of the top two strings, right? Doing it with the open A string and then just moving that shape down to a G major by playing it against the open A string. Okay, so uh, we call this sort of a piano chord or a slash card. G slash A. Okay. Okay. 
So check out the pulse of this. We got down, up, down, up, down, down. Okay. Uh, the last two are eighth notes, uh, you know, right on the four and, right? So. All right. Second bar is the same thing with different inversions, okay? So now I've got the 11th fret of the D, 9th fret of the G, 10th fret of the B, 9th fret of the high string. That is also an A major chord. Playing it also with the open A here. And if I move that shape down two frets, that is also, a, that is a G major now, right? So put that together. So that's the idea with this one. All right. Uh, some cool shapes here and, uh, you know, kind of a great way to uh, expand upon a, a, a chord progression, right? Like if you're playing down here and maybe you've got like 16 bars of this when it comes something like this, right? Maybe you, could, you start to build it a little bit by using just some higher inversions of the same chords, right? Right? That kind of idea, okay? So you can kind of move up the neck or down the neck for that matter a little bit and just give a little bit of a different texture to it, right? Yeah, Terry, a little bit sticks, sticksy. <laughs> Maybe so, all right? Okay, exercise 2B, same idea, but let's try it with the open D string, okay? So I've got the open D string, and then I've got the seventh fret of the G and B, fifth fret of the high string, okay? This is an open, upper part of an open D major chord, but this is an upper tri a triad, D major triad against the open D string. I could just move that shape down two frets, and you get that tension, right? Because you've got a C major chord against a D in the root. So it kind of sounds like it's not resolved, right? So. So there you go. That's the idea is that, uh, you know, you can take a riff, you can take a chord progression and, uh, you know, kind of build it a little bit by moving up the neck with different inversions, right? So we've got this triad shape for major, just moving around. But then we also grab this one, which is the upper part, right? The D major bar chord, 10th position, and just got the top three strings right there, right? 11th fret of the G, 10th fret of the top two. Move that down. That's a C major, right? And then I even went up here. I got like, it's basically the D shape, but an octave up, right? 14, 15, 14, and the G, B, and E. Move that down to, that's a C major. You with me? Got it? Kind of the idea of that one. And like I said, these are just, Examples that hopefully spur on a little bit of experimentation on your part. Take the idea, take the approach, and just apply it to different keys, different open strings. See what you can do. Yeah, end of the line, right? Or a bad company, right? <laughs> right? Or if Traveling Wilburys was a good one, too. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, the... Uh, good stuff love it all right exercise three strums and arpeggiations got like a 
pretty straight ahead example here of uh, incorporating a strum with some arpeggiation. And again, uh, this is wide open for experimentation on your part. So uh, let's play through it once and then uh, maybe kind of mess around with it a little bit. So it uh, starts on an open E. So the rhythm of this this one is really straightforward. It's it's a straight eighth notes. One and two and three and four and right, just right sort of on those subdivisions. So we've got an open E chord, and then we're going to a five chord, but with the uh, basically a B power chord with uh, open B string, open high E string. This is a B sus four chord. It sounds really nice in the key of E, just kind of floaty like that, right? And then I've got way too long of a chord <laughs> name right here, but I love this chord. This is an F sharp minor seven. Uh, with an open E added to it. I mean, with an open B, with the open B string added as well as the open E. That's in the chord, but you've got uh, the add 11, which is the B note. Okay? Really floaty, really cool. Fourth fret of the A and D, first, uh, second fret of the G. So I'm not using the low string on this, but you could if you could get your thumb over. <laughs> That's a tough one. Um, but yeah, the F sharp, right? It's basically an F sharp minor, but like kind of with the open two high strings, right? Instead of that, you got. So really open coming from that B, F sharp minor, and then ending off in the last bar on A, but not playing a full A major, you're opening up the open B string on that. So what you end up having are chords out of the key of E major, and you're adapting, you're basically uh, playing those chords, but sticking to an open B and open E string with it, which really ties those chords together. So it sounds great strummed. It sounds great arpeggiated, right? Like... Now, what if we were to mess up the rhythm a little bit on the arpeggiation and make it a little bit more interesting? You could go. Like... You know, you could kind of do all sorts of different rhythms, improvise with it a little bit. You know, kind of add some notes in there, kind of mess around with the rhythm a little bit. I think there's lots here to kind of get out of it, right? Love it. Uh, Riff's asking what model of my Martin it is. It is some sort of uh, MC something or other can't read it right now. Uh, you know, I really wish they had simpler, <laughs> simpler model names. Uh, some sort of Guitar Center exclusive uh, guitar. Um, uh, it's an M something or other. <clears throat> so I uh, apologize. I don't know the full model on this. But I do love this guitar. It's killer. Um, let's see what else we got here. Play chord and play notes making up the, the chord. C on the neck. Uh, not sure, Joseph. Uh, just like chords, so many. Yeah, exactly. Steve's asking, do you have an idea what GT is about to release by free? It's on the thumbnail. Interesting, huh? I don't. Um, darn it. I, the last free song I remember was Wishing Well, 
which I think is already up there, isn't it? it they may be releasing, maybe they hadn't released it yet. I'm not sure. Um, good one, Steve. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Can't think off the top. Not sure. <laughs> uh, oh, they have it listed, but it, oh, maybe they have it listed, but no songs. I think there used to be. If Wishing Well's not up there, maybe it used to be on there and then I got pulled or something. Like so many songs, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. Excellent, Terry. Okay, good. Thanks so much for the kind words, everybody. Moving on. Exercise four. Six, eight strums. Let, let's change time signatures a little bit. Let's change feels. Um, so I've got sort of on, on the face of it, a simple chord, one sort of one, four chord progression um, out of starting with A7, going to D7, okay? But I, uh, I changed the time signature so that we can kind of work in a different uh, feel. So six, eight sounds like one, two, three, four four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it has that triplet feel about it. And if we look at the cluster of rhythms on the staff of this particular example, example four on the PDF, expand the description below. Um, I'm gonna grab this A7 bar chord, root five, okay? Barring down on the fifth fret, root six, sorry. Barring down on uh, the fifth fret of all six strings, adding the seventh fret of the A, sixth fret of the G string, okay? And let's have a look at our strum pattern. Okay, so we've got a, a down stroke and then a down up, down up. So you've got that one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. That's kind of what we're going for here. That's the strum, okay? And of course, we want to keep this thing going. So you see that even though I'm doing a down and then not doing the upstroke right after it, I'm still doing the motion of it because this is how you keep solid timing, right? Nice and relaxed and just keep this moving. You got to... Even better if you get your foot tapping and your arm's going to want to go with it, right? Now, what I'm doing is I'm changing the chord by moving the pinky onto the chord, okay? So that's the whole first line there is I've got just a regular A7, but then halfway through that first bar, I'm putting my pinky onto the seventh fret of the B string. And that turns it into an A13 chord, okay? Now, if I move that pinky one fret up to the eighth fret, that's an alternate way to play the A dominant A seventh chord, okay? You're basically just doubling up on this G note in a higher octave, okay? Just another way to play that A7 is with the pinky on the eighth fret, right? And then move it back down to the seventh fret for the last part of the second bar. Okay. Um, just a quick question here. Rich is asking, uh, what's the best way to practice the shuffle rhythm? Uh, you know, in the context of the blues, which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, we've got a blues example coming up. But uh, I would say because blues backing tracks are ubiquitous, we have tons of them. On guitar tricks, we also have tons on YouTube and everywhere else on the internet. I would find a blues shuffle backing track and try to lock with it, okay? And if it's going too fast, try to find a slow one that you can play with. Or if there's a way that you can slow it down, do that, okay? And of course, that shuffle rhythm is going to be uh, one, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. So it has that bounce to it, right? But a lot of times that feel is built into those backing tracks. You're going to feel that in the rhythm section. So it's going to be a lot easier for you versus a metronome, which, you know, is a great way to practice, but you're not going to feel that rhythm necessarily when it's just going one, click, 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 two, click, click, you know, you're not feeling that. Oh, 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 oh,
what, right? Which you'll definitely feel in a blues backing track. So I say just find some blues backing tracks and even just grab a seventh chord and just practice your strum with it, right? <laughs> Try to lock in that upstroke so that it's it's matched with what the, the drums and bass are doing to make that shuffle happen. Does that make sense? Hopefully that answers it. Uh, yes, Chris, these are gonna be a little bit, challenge your uh, endurance a little bit, okay? So definitely don't leave it on there too long, shake it out, okay? Uh, but keep coming back to it and give it some little bursts, okay? Uh, second line of this, exercise four, is D7 root, uh, root five. So it's going to be uh, your fifth fret of the A string all the way up, adding the seventh fret of the D, seventh fret of the B, okay? Similar idea here, but I've already got my pinky on the seventh fret of the B string. I'm going to move it up one fret. That makes it a D7 sus4. Bring it back down to the seventh fret to D7. And then pull it off, and you're going to get a D sus2. D7 sus2. So that together. So great stuff. Yeah, I feel it too. All right, everybody. So you got to kind of get on it, then get off it, shake it out, go back to it. <laughs> Dustin's asking, do you just count one, one, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 12? No, actually, how you should think of it is one and two and three and four and uh, yeah, one and what am I thinking? One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and that's it. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and okay. You want to do the ands because uh, we've got quarter notes are the count, but the in between are the ands, okay? So, yeah, one two and three and four, five and six and. That's what you want there, okay? Uh, yes, Doug, if we have time, I'll go to the one, six, five, four. All right, we're rushing to get through it today. Lots of questions, so keep them coming though, absolutely. Uh, Joseph's asking, uh, who did I take lessons from when I started? I uh, actually started in middle school. There was actually a guitar elective in our school. And so we just had a class where we learned on uh, these nylon string guitars. We learned the basics, right? And then from there, I didn't really take lessons for a really long time. I learned from other, you know, from friends who played. I learned from magazines and tried to learn songs uh, off records. And I did not take lessons for a long time. And then I went to GIT and kind of learned all this stuff way later. And so uh, that's how I kind of got caught up on all the theory and all that kind of stuff, okay? GIT in Hollywood, that was a contemporary music school. Uh, Russ, you may have mentioned this before, but what keys are the most classic rock pop songs played in that you teach? Yeah, guitar-friendly keys, uh, generally speaking, uh, you know, sort of the E's and A's, G's, uh, less, well, depending, C, I guess, is, is a guitar-friendly key. Um, yeah, and then you start to get into the sharp keys and all that kind of stuff. And those are less of a guitar friendly key, even though, um, yes, of course, you know, with bar chords and capos, we can play all that stuff, right? Um, but guitar centric, you know, classic rock kind of stuff is usually played in guitar friendly keys because you come up with the, the riffs or whatever on guitar, right? So, yeah, those guitar friendly keys E, G, A, C, D, you know, basically the caged <laughs> keys are probably the most popular, right? There we go. Joseph, his fingers have been hurting due to the bar chords on classical guitar. That'll do it. Absolutely. Get those uh, calluses going, right? <laughs> Got it. Uh, Riff Rath is asking, yes, 
I've got a combination of obviously the guitars coming in the microphone at the same time as the the direct signal from the axe effects. So is there any phase interference? I have no idea. Um, I think it sounds okay. There might be a phase problem. I'm not sure, but uh, double checked the sound on the stream and seems to sound okay. <laughs> Jeff, what's going on? And we got the Wolfgang in a lefty model. Congrats, man. That is awesome. Great stuff. Love it. <laughs> there you go. Nikki the dog remembers GIT in the SoCal days. I love it. There we go. How good are your fingers compared to when you were 30? Mine have a little sludge in them at 60. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I feel like I'm slowing down a little bit. I'm slowing down. I can still play. I still got good agility and everything, but uh, I used to rip a little bit more back <laughs> when I was a young man. <laughs> Thanks, Rad Flying V. I appreciate that. <clears throat> uh, there we go. Okay. Exercise five. Oh, yeah. Midnight Rider. Why not, right? Uh, let's learn this one. Brothers, right? <laughs> um, so some pickup notes here. Open A string, third fret of the A. It's going to be a down up pick. And then it's a D power chord. Open D string, second fret of the G, third fret of the B. But the tricky part of this is going back to the third fret of the A string with a down stroke. And then because you've got like a 16th note later, you're kind of hitting the chord again. It's got to be on an upstroke. Let's see. You'd also add a little bit of a bluesy bend on the third fret, right? I thought just for completeness sake, hey, why don't do the rest of the, the chord progression, right? So this is a G minor seven. Third fret of the low string, muting the A string, curling my finger around, and then just barring down third fret from the D string all the way up. And then just a regular C major. You got that chord progression. Not very good at playing it. Right? Are you with me? Thought I'd throw that in there. That's a fun one, right? Cool, cool. A little bluesy sound in Southern Rock. Uh, exercise six, strums and mutes, okay? Uh, like this chord progression a lot, <clears throat> which uh, sort of straddles two different keys at the same time. Uh, I'll play this first, and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, Joseph, uh, you know, coming from the Lola. I also think of an Alice the Nelson Chain song that sort of has that vibe, too. Um, what's cool is that E major, right? And we've got two quarter notes on down strokes. And then we're going to the C chord. But this is the C chord with put, that puts the G in the bass as well. It sounds a lot thicker, right? Compared to C without it and then a C with the G in the bass. Definitely sounds a little bit thicker. I like that. So uh, going to 16th notes on that C chord, down, up, down, up. 
And then we've got the muted strum on the downstroke, right? So use that opportunity to change chords and also use the karate chop on a downstroke. You see how I'm doing that? I'm striking the strings, but I'm also turning my hand inward so that the karate chopper here holds the strings so that you can get a nice percussive muted strum, right? Now, when I do that, on the upstroke, I want to hit the next chord, which is an open D chord. Okay? Another muted, okay? Muted strum on the downstroke, and then going back to the E chord on the upstroke. love about this chord progression is that uh, the C chord and the D chord do not belong in E major. Okay. Those are chords that are not in E major, but I started the song with E major and E major sounds like home for this song. It sounds like the one chord, right? So what happens is we're actually modulating we're starting in E major for the first chord strums, but when we go to the C chord and the D chord, we are modulating to E minor. Those are chords from E minor, okay? Uh, this is called modal interchange, and it's very common with plenty of songs, and uh, it's just cool. It has a little bit of a different sound to it, right? Like if you played this with E minor, it would sound a little more quote unquote correct, right? Like okay? but there's something about switching it to E major. It just adds a little bit of a twist onto the whole thing that's really cool. Okay. I love that sound. That sort of major one chord switching to the flat six, flat seven chords from the parallel minor key is great. I love that sound. Uh, so there's a lot here. There's a cool chord progression using modal interchange. There's also some quarter note strums, 16th note strums, and muted strums. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jay Tarpo, so they figure out that by sound and we analyze it, explain it. Do they come up with that by design? It could be either way. It depends. Uh, a lot of rock music is made with people not knowing what they're doing, and they and they just come come across something that sounds cool, and then musician people that know theory can explain it, right? Can explain what's going on. But there are plenty of musicians and composers and songwriters that know the theory and know these kind of things, and so by design they may say that's that's the sound I'm going for. I want to be able to do that. So it could be a, an example of either of those. Okay. <laughs> Joseph just started playing classical six months ago, a different animal. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Love it, Steve. Then get rich. Money for nothing, right? <laughs> cool. Okay. Uh, exercise seven. We've got to do a little bit of a shuffly acoustic blues. Came up with kind of a riff on the one, four, and five chords. Uh, let's see, Danny's asking about the Yamaha acoustic, the low E 12 fret action shows two and a quarter. Yeah, probably a little bit high. Um, that's one area, acoustic guitar setups. That's one area I'm not like qualified to probably comment on. Uh, if you take it to a qualified luthier or technician, uh, it's usually they, they'll cut the nut a little bit deeper or they'll cut the saddles a little bit deeper right? Like kind of shave down the saddles a little bit to lower the action. And of course, uh, shift the neck if they have to. Um, that does seem a little bit high, right? So uh, James is James asking, when you use the karate chop mute, do you change how you rasp pick? How I grasp the pick? Not really. It, it's, it's, it's sort of just kind of getting used to it. I'm 
just it's really just about sort of clamping this part down. I'm still holding on to the pick the same. Randy's asking, he j just jumped on. All right, welcome. Is it possible to go back and watch the entire presentation? I believe so, yes. And this will stay up here on the Guitar Tricks channel so you can watch it at any time in the future. I think you can roll back uh, once you've jumped on, or maybe not. Yeah, pro maybe not. I I'm not sure how that works, but uh, you might have to wait for us to be finished and then it'll all be loaded in there for you to access. All right? Exercise seven, acoustic blues, playing out of an A7 open position. So I've got the open A string. I'm barring down at the sec second fret of the D string all the way up, adding the third fret of the high string. Okay. So I've got uh, triplets here. You can see uh, eighth notes tied together with a three. That means uh, triplet eighth notes. So and you're going to play three notes in the count of one, two, Three, four. Okay. So I've got a group of three strums. I'm going to use all down strokes for this. And then just a quick little single note uh, riff, sliding into the fourth fret of the A, then grabbing the second fret of the D and the fourth fret of the D. Those are notes from major pentatonic, which I can combine with the seventh chord. And then back to the strums. And so you could play a 12 bar blues with this, right? So here we go. Three, you are. D7. A7. E7. Back to A7. Okay, just as one example of, of a way to put this together into a 12 bar blues. Okay, I played the riff in A. I moved it up to D7, right? Open D7 here. And then. Just moving up string sets with the same notes. And then again with the five chord. E7, right? Okay. Pretty cool little riff. All right. Steve working on the second solo, Sweet Mom, Alabama, slightly above the pay grade. Not an easy one, my friend. Um, keep with it, man. But that is not an easy one. A challenge for sure. Okay. <laughs> Keep, keep at it, my friend. All right. Exercise eight. Thought we'd go a little bit exotic scales to end off the night. Um, so let me play it a couple times. We'll talk a little bit about it. And this is the Phrygian dominant scale. It's a little, fun little picking exercise, actually. Um, okay. So if you have a chord progression... Something like uh, if I'm playing on a B major. And if I move up one fret, the next chord is like, say, a C major. So you're just one semitone apart from two major chords. Okay. You can use the scale. Rolling Stones-ish a little bit. Um, has that sort of Eastern flavor to it a little bit. Um, what I like about this scale pattern is that you're using all your fingers, right? Like if you start on the D string, you can use your ring and pinky, nine and 10 on the D string. Yeah, the noodle scale, right? <laughs> you got it, offspring, right? Okay, you can use your in, uh, ring and pinky. And then you use your middle and ring on the G string, eight and nine. 
and then you've got your index and middle and pinky on uh, seven, eight, and ten on the B string, right? <laughs> All right, ending it off with a little bit of that one. So uh, that's a fun one. Definitely a, a specific sound and uh, works really great over those sort of semi-tone apart chord progressions. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. We just flew by. I super appreciate all the comments tonight, all the questions. Uh, it was super engaging, super busy tonight. Thank you so much. Awesome questions. You bring it each and every week. I appreciate it so much. Uh, have a great weekend. Have a great into next week. Next week, we'll be back on the electric uh, guitar workout of some sort. And I uh, hope everybody's, oh, yeah, it's a long weekend here in uh, Canada and the States. Labor Day, so have a great long weekend to those of you. Uh, all right. Thanks so much, everybody. I appreciate it. We'll see you again another week. Yes, Dustin. <laughs> Finally. Well, I got, had to have one cough in here tonight, so there you go. It's still hanging out just a little bit, right? <laughs> appreciate all the kind words. Thanks uh, for joining each and every week. I super appreciate it. And uh, once again, we'll see you next week. All right. Take care, everybody. Cheers. See ya. See ya. See ya.